Where's Glenn? Glenn is afraid to fly, and he, he, he couldn't find a boat to get here. <laughs> so, so Glenn and I knew, normally here, uh, Robert Cripps have worked together for 20 years. So this is part of their geometric algebra, geometry, manufacturing support tools and methods. It's part of that. What we're interested in is GCO's um, manufacturing process. Oh, I'll explain what we are. For those of you who don't know the UK that well, so we're from three institutes. University of Birmingham sits right in the Midlands. University of Bath is in the southwest. University of West of England, where I come from now, the region from Bath, is also in the southwest. So it's the, it's the second university of Bristol. So, I'm going to try and take today. We're going to get the CAD CAM through manufacturing process. Explain one issue that um, CAM manufacturers have. A potential solution to that. And then, then a brief explanation of what those are done to lead you into sort of Ben's paper. If Glenn was here, he's basically, this is a forming shoulder. It's like he likes to show every time he comes here. So, what do we mean by CAD CAM? So, the CAD process, generating the geometry, a part, in the virtual environment. So, top picture we've got there. This component here is the wheel hub of a single seated racer car, a single seated um, race car. So, you've done some basic modeling on this, you've done some analysis, some stress analysis, some material analysis. So, we produce a component that's the inside of the wheel. We now want to, we've got it in the virtual environment, we now want to manufacture it. So, the next step, we put it into a piece of software, a CAM software. That CAM software produces a lot of tool parts. <laughs> so going back to the forming shoulder, the visualization you have here, all these motions here, this is taking a cutting tool that's moving around this part, and the tips of that tool go around here. It's a subtractive process. It cuts, it removes material. So in the end, what we end up with is a component that we hope matches the initial CAD drawing. So, is in essence a linear process. You have a CAD model, that CAD model goes into a piece of CAM software. The CAM software goes through the discretization, so breaks it down, generates these tool paths. Those tool paths then get sent to the controller that's moving the cutting tool around, where it reforms it to produce what it wants, to produce, you hope, the profile it's going to follow. And at the end of the process, we've got our physical model. The issue we get is in this process when we're taking from the G code, so the, the, the code that the CAM software has produced out, is how, how are they regenerated or reformed to produce the profiles we need? Now, so it, it's a curve matching process. It's, the cutting tools will move over the actual geometry. And this, you hope that the, the tip point of the tool follows the path you like. Now, the, the way that the CAM manufacturer has to do this to guarantee that if we have a curve like this, we want the cutting tool to follow this curve. The actual, oh, lovely. Thank you very much. So we're going to follow, we've got a part We've, on that part, we've got a curve. So we've got a cutting tool that's going to go around this profile here. Now, the actual NC manufacturer, or the actual drive manufacturer, may specify points across here. So we end up with a process of the actual tool not following a curve, but maybe doing linear steps. To stop this process happening, the CAM manufacturer will make sure that it puts loads of parts on here. So even if they did go you know, little linear steps, it's going to keep to the original profile. The downside of that, the more of these poses we put in here, the, the, the positions and orientations we have, it will slow down the CAM software. So it may not be that efficient. <coughs> Those of you who've done manufacturing before will probably come across the G codes. This is the output from the CAM software. So this is here, G01 is a linear interpolation. 
straight line. So start point here, start point in space. It's then going to move into x by one unit, then move y one unit, x one unit to come down. It produces a square. We can also do that. We can do it as well. So geo2 and geo3 are radial interpolations. So we've got a start point, we've got a stop point, and we're also saying a radius. So what this is doing here is moving it around in segments to produce a circle. But again, it's doing these radiuses. We have no guarantee that it's actually following this curve. So the cam manufacturer is putting these extra points in here to go through this process. In three dimensions, so x and y and z, very, very complex parts will have four or five and now even six different drives. So, different. so we've got more and more G codes coming in here to produce motions. So the issue we get is some of these G codes are machine dependent. We may not know if it's free form and it's processed. And inherently, the nature is sort of curve based. Well, we want it to be motion based if possible. So, what we mean by the curve is a smooth changing of position. Whereas a motion, if we think about the cutting tool as a motion, is what we're thinking about it as changing its position and orientation. So, instead of thinking about where the end of the cutting tool sits, we're interested in where the whole cutting tool moves within the cutting environment. And by thinking about them as a motion, we get a smoother, smoother transition between where we want to go. So, hopefully mostly from, from a CAD background we'll understand the sort of splining. So, starting with a beast line, we draw a lot of dots in space in the CAD package. Beast line will, will the best it can like this to try and get as close as it can to those points. The Bezier variant. Of this, we have a start point, we have a stop point, we have two control points. Cubic version there will try and generate a curve. So these are existing, these right there. What we want to do, that this is in a plane, we want to move that into three dimensions. So what we're advocating in the work here is to move away from this point to point along a curve, is going to use geometric algebra. Then we're we'll be better explaining the difference of all these when it comes, in my eyes, these are all geometric algebra. It's probably incorrect. So, think about these points in space. So if we look at it from a Bezier, a cubic version there, same variant, we've got a start point, we've got a stop point, we've got two control points moving this. We can generate that, same again, as a cutting path, using Bezier cubic motion. And if we're looking at three times, this is somebody else's work, we can also do this with a beast line between a load of um, tooling points. <coughs> but again, it comes back to our point. To get a perfectly lovely smooth motion, that's really that, is we've got to add more and more points along this curve. So that's why we're stuck to have a thing of thinking about linear motions and geometric algebras, and geometric algebras to produce that. So, using a linear sort of motion with geometric algebra, all we need to do is initially set its initial point in space, its, its initial pose, set a final pose, and then a motion that it needs to follow. And within that motion, it will actually change following that curve. So that basically simplifies this process. So we haven't got to dictate all the time points along this curve, because you measure yourself, it's following that curve. So, same again, we can follow <coughs> initial pose and a final pose and we get the motion sitting in between. So we're not considering the cutting, where the cutting point is itself, we're just considering moving the actual tool, the motion of the tool in space and relying upon that point is where we want it to be. So, we can then think about all these things as a basic spiral. So 
any part we can generate from a spiral. So we can, we can um, discrete it down, uh, down into a spiral of any shape we like. So again, we're starting to get a little more complicated. Again, we're only defining two poses, start point, stop point. We need to generate some more information than actually in the G codes. So for the CAM manufacturer, what they're going to have to do is add more data at the start. So we're going to have a minimum six, but preferably eight. So we get the most out. So eight more variables in the G code for the start pose, for the finish pose. And that will allow us then to change between segments of spiral. Mm -hmm. So by thinking about things in motion, it gets over the problem that the CAM manufacturer has of having to identify additional points <coughs> along here. The downside to this is that all of it does is actually pushed the actual problem down to the actual controllers. See, at this moment in time, the people that produce the, the controllers are only ever thinking about the end point motion of this. So where this product needs to move on to, which Ben is now going to, Ben is now jumping over the fence to the, the bad people who produce the controllers, <laughs> as of today he's starting to work for Siemens, as they need, they need to see the benefits in doing this. It, it does start to complicate their process. But as an example, so we think about Pringle Crisp, this, this geometry we've got here. Two minutes left. Really? Yeah. So you see. <laughs> okay. So the required, the required curve we've got here is the black curve. So you see this on here? If we break this down in the regular pattern into seven segments, we can, we can, do, we can copy that, the motions in geometry algebra. We only need to break it down into um, four spirals to keep the same error. So, to make their curve more accurate than the, the existing method, if we put some more control points in here, it has to go through. We can see that now we're putting more points in there. If we follow geometric algebra, using the thinking about only the motion in this happening, then we, we only have five spirals that we need to make up. And extension that again, so we put more points in here for the controller to follow. So we've now got 50, um, 54 segments along this half of there. Using only motion paths as a thought, then we're just running at 10. So, if we move away from the thought of actually using the cutting, the actual thing where the cutting tip is, and then start to think about where the, the motion is, we will smoothen at least, we'll ease the process for the cam manufacturer, and if the actual NC controller people realise the depth, actually realises, will make their job easier as well, because we're more accurate, tends to be more accurate, especially when we're transferring across machines. We're distributed manufacturing now, so I may have the same part, I may ship that to three different sites across the UK and manufacture that for me. Because we're all using different machines, there's uncertainty between each machine system. If you for those that are really interested in how the motion is generated, on Thursday afternoon at five, so. then Ben will, will take you in, into the, the, the deep theory of this. Well, more on the motion design, perhaps. You won't intimidate you too much with that. <laughs> yes. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much.